Wow. Good evening. I must admit, I never in my life thought I would find myself at a rally. But there's a point in life when you just have, have to say, you know what, you gotta do what's right. And speaking out against what's happening at San Onofre is right. So let me give you a little bit about just for explanation purposes. First and foremost, a lot of people said, well, what do you know? You're not a nuclear engineer. I'm not. But in the early 70s and 80s, I was a nuclear weapons security officer, a nuclear weapons handling officer, a nuclear weapons safety officer, and I understood what it took to safely maneuver and move material, nuclear material, of a much smaller quantity than we're dealing at, at San Onofre properly with the safeguards, conditions, and procedures. And the more I learned about what was going on at San Onofre, the more I became scared. I started to question whether or not they knew what they were doing, and more importantly, whether or not there were procedures. And certifications were in place. And the individuals who were actually responsible for moving 2.6 million pounds of material were the right people to do what they're doing. And we weren't getting answers, we were getting questions. You explain to me. I'm sorry folks, that's not how it works. They're supposed to make us feel comfortable with their answers. Not spin around the bush and come right back to the same place we started, but they're supposed to provide us an assurity with in individuals who are certainly qualified beyond those individuals who have an ultimate responsibility to us all for the safety of this material. So I look at it and I say, you know what, where are we? And what are we doing? Well, for those of us who are old enough, again, I was a nuclear weapons security officer in the 70s. I joined the Navy when I was 10, by the way. <laughs> um, you know, you, you start to look at it and you say, oh my God, what, what are we doing? Well, in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, my generation created what we're still calling today Superfund sites. And we really didn't understand the consequences associated with taking our waste and burying it in the ground. And thinking somehow that all, of our cons all the consequences would be something we would never have to deal with. Well, today we have 28 sites we still can't clean up. But yet here we are in another generation who should have learned from their mistakes and are creating the biggest disaster potential right in our backyard. And we're not talking about a Superfund site that we can clean up. We're talking about a Superfund site that potentially will prevent us from entering the zone for the better part of two millennia. That's not something you play with. And more importantly, it isn't something based upon everything that we know you allow it to happen. I've spent my entire career assessing risk. I've spent my entire career looking at the consequences and determining whether or not it's safe to do what you're doing for both the sake of individuals and security, which I'm responsible for, imp for, for imposing. And when the risk conditions outweighed the others, you sat back and said, you know what? This is probably something we should examine in a completely different fashion. I am a member of the advisory board to the Center for Climate and Security. Recently, we published a paper and I asked each of you to go look at it. It's on their website, it's Center for Climate and Security. There's about 60 of us flag officers and secretaries of state and others who advise the panel and create um, white papers. And this past year, we created a white paper that we sent to the Department of Defense, the State Department and the White House in particular. It's now open for general viewing. That particular document takes a look at and questions what would happen with the proliferation of nuclear materials as we move forward when 17 countries around the world have declared in the Clean Climate Act to expect 
that a large portion of their renewable energy be provided by nuclear. And then we extract ourselves from the accord so that the 92 nations who are signatories, we being the only one who's no longer, if you think that those 92 nations are, are going to engage in the technology that America has, and look what we are doing with our waste, that's the thing that scares me the most, is we are supposed to be the te most technologically advanced nuclear capable country in the world that not only regulates, but understands the consequences of the risks. And we are today allowing the burial on a beach of three million pounds. And as the former director of the NRC said, once it's in the ground, folks, it's there forever. He's basically declared there's no way anybody's going to come back and take it out. But more recently, we've even heard that it may not even be safe to move the canisters once they're in the ground, which means they're there forever. Now what do we do? Well, it's time to say, you know what, hold on. My wife has asked me a number of times, said, Len, why, why, honey, why do you care? Our kids have moved to the other coast. <laughs> You're right, because what I do every day is for my five grandchildren, and they're now living on the other coast. That's not why they moved. But while I live here, I feel it my responsibility to speak up for the grandchildren of everybody else who's sitting there saying, you know what? <laughs> Nobody's speaking for me. We cannot allow this to happen without assurances that what they are doing is safe. And not safe in a questionable fashion because every time you ask them, they say, well, theoretically, it could be done. You don't screw with theoretical nuclear catastrophes. You either know how to do it or you don't know how to do it. It's that simple. It either has been done or it has not been done. And it have, if, if it has not been done, then it needs to be engineered to a point in which we are absolutely assured 100% that the safety of that material will not jeopardize or, or um, potentially destroy Southern California or any place else it's it may be buried. We need to fix this now. So what I'm going to ask you all is one, don't leave here without signing the call to action card. And if there's enough around, grab them and have a conversation like this around your table at home. And get on the phone and tell your elected officials that it's not good enough that you just send a proclamation to whoever, that you are displeased with the way this, man this effort is going. We need to take a completely different action, and we have got to get these people to understand this is not business as usual. If I were to want to bury a 55-gallon drum of gasoline in my backyard, I would go through a completely different and more regulated process than these people have gone through to bury three million pounds of nuclear waste. And more importantly, the community has had no say as to whether or not it's safe or it's not safe. The engineers and the scientists have shown us over and over again that we need to take a break. An NRC director has said we should stop. If you don't think that's the case, then we'll just bury it and it'll just keep going. Fill out those cards take a handful home, call your local elected officials, call your state representatives, call those individuals who are in the federal system who can take the NRC to task and tell them this is not a regulatory issue, this is a safety issue. And the Constitution of the United States directs that this government provide for our safety. And they are not. Thank you.